ready to go hello everyone namaste welcome to the first episode of my sacred space i'm so delighted to welcome you all and a very special welcome to our guest shikha su shikha is not only a dear friend is also the head of the yoga studio at abhidindu uh, what makes shikha unique is the fact that she is such a versatile yoga teacher she teaches very many different forms of yoga but it was not always about yoga for her uh, she's had a very very uh, long career in the corporate world and prior to that she was already dabbling in spirituality from a very young age hi shikha hi welcome thank you for the kind words <laughs> the sign of the times that we have to meet like this right <laughs> otherwise you were in the abhibindu yoga studio more than i was you know morning evening afternoon all the time there was so much yoga happening yeah, yeah. i miss that space right now <laughs> yes we keeping it all charged up mm-hmm. and everything for you <laughs> yeah so so shikha tell me a little bit you know you weren't born into yoga you kind of sort of you know made your way to yoga how did yoga enter your life <clears throat> well uh, actually i was very overweight <laughs> from my teens okay so you know when you have a body which is overweight you generally want to look for anything to lose weight right but uh, so that's how yoga entered my life but uh, that was in my early years but then uh, like you said i was in corporate life and uh, so i was really that time it was yoga was an exercise for me in my 20s when i was you know dabbling with it and uh, power yoga used to be the norm in those days i remember Uh, but really yoga happened for me when uh, i uh, you know the, uh, like you said corporate life corporate life is stressful though i loved every bit of that life because you know it's uh, i was a creative person so you are creating your senior work out there in advertising so uh, but you know it has impact on our body and our mind definitely when we work in a corporate life it's uh, i had i was ridden with anxiety i i used to have crazy hours of work you know there was no time of coming home or getting up sometimes you would go late to work etc so once i remember i had taken a, a sabbatical uh, because it it got a little too much you know the like mind also and during that sabbatical i actually realized that i uh, i went for a trek with a friend of mine i went to uh, this place um, called valley of flowers and i love the ganges i just have this love for the ganges so somebody said that uh, she is going for a solo trip to or uh, the whole route up to badrinath valley of flowers etc so i just hopped on to the ride and uh, when we were trekking and it was the shortest trek actually there's a, a place called tungnath and we were trekking see i've always walked in everything i always thought i was fit enough like theek i was heavy and everything but on that trek i realized i was breathless my knees were hurting and i was not that old you know and i i got a, this was like a warning sign like i really need to do something about it you know uh, because there's a lot of neglect that happens in our early years which we don't realize so that's when i came back and i decided i had set an intention actually that i really want to um, do something that stays with me rather than just hopping in and hopping out of classes which i had been doing you know till then so i set a very clear intention that i want to learn yoga from a teacher who would teach me in a way that i can travel with it because i had a traveling job you know i had to um, go to bombay a lot i had to go for shoots and stuff uh, right so uh, you couldn't really attend classes like regularly so i actually found a teacher right next to my house and he only did teachers training courses okay and i didn't want to be a teacher that time so i anyway i just went in i just went along this is in something ah yeah there was this uh, teacher uh, swami vidyanand ji he is now in pondicherry and he was teaching transformational yoga okay and, and this I, was in that 
Paul Street in Sultanpur. Yeah, yeah, in in Mahipalpur. And I don't know if you know, he had a small yeah, yeah. board. He had a small board yeah. in Goa, and before that, had done Bharat Thakur. There's a training happening in a place like that. I would yeah, imagine. I imagine. I, I thought it was just like because I set an intention. I saw yoga board when I came back from that trek, and I was like, "Let me just, you know, give it a shot." And it turned out. I went to him saying that I want to lose weight. That's all I want to do, <laughs> you know. And I'm dabbling in yoga, and he said, "Ha, ho jayega, ho jayega." And I'm like, "Okay, let's just go for it." But it was a very good experience because that's where I bought into yoga. You know, that's where uh, my real relationship began because all the classes that I had been to. Had been so much about just you know group do whatever the teacher is saying. There was no understanding, you know. There was no breathing. There was no understanding. Now there are some really good yoga studios, really good teachers, you know, who are teaching very well. But maybe I didn't encounter them because, like I said, I had a busy schedule and I would just hop in and hop out. And but there I understood why I need to breathe and what the feeling of yoga in the body is, you know. Once you get that, you know, that really got me married to yoga. because he also said a very nice thing because i couldn't get up early in the morning and somebody asked a question that uh, you know we can't get up in the morning what what should we do what should be the day plan and all so he said that you know some people are uh, solar people and some people are lunar people some people can't get up in the morning so they need to just move up with the moon cycle and i that was so awesome because then then already you have a stressful life so you need to build yoga into the life you know another teacher i mean who was i mean she was a partner with him vandana she she also told me you can do a, you know have a cup of tea and do yoga that that's what sold it to me but after that the journey really began because once you start doing yoga your your routine your your eating habits everything slowly slowly start to change you know you start to manage your stress manage your body it i think that's where i got hooked to yoga and then after that the journey really began you know then i wanted to look so did you what you were still now working uh, in the corporate world and you were doing this yoga on the side so that's a practical 6 months is when i met them and then i i did yoga for 6 months continuously and i used to be there for 4 4 hours understanding the philosophy concepts and all and that's when i realized that this is how yoga should have been taught to me very early in my life <laughs> you know with understanding had i got it then after that i was back to my corporate life but so, so with that a germ inside you was had been planted by your father many years back yeah. yes. when you were very early on i mean you were just 7 years old and you were already dabbling into some aspects of spirituality you already had people coming to consult you for tarot was your intuition very strong i don't know you know i read somewhere uh, see 7 years of age my father got cancer so his whole orientation turned into spirituality so all the books around me all the environment around me was very spiritual so um some somewhere i read you know he gave me this book on fortune telling and i knew that it makes you popular you know so i started dabbling in it but somewhere i read that if you really start tuning into your uh little voice inside and this was when i was probably 12 uh, i read this that if you tune into that little voice inside it speaks to you and says something you know and if you tune in every one of us has the intuition and every one of us is psychic so i actually tuned in because you know that's something that i was having fun doing and i realized that it actually works you know and we all i mean as a mother we know as a child we know when we listen to the little voice so intuitive yes i start i used to do a uh, dabble with tarot and cartomancy and playing card fortune telling and all so it was fun yeah so in a way yoga was he was there in my life even then because he he also was into yoga but not an active practitioner but yeah breath work and stuff like that yeah <laughs> so then after this um, you know you you gone to this little place in mahipalpur a non descript uh, kind of yoga place uh, and learned uh, yoga you you spent 4 years doing this just then so this uh, this this dabbling with this was actually the the 6 months and then i actually dabbled with different forms of yoga but right many years now it's been about 12 12 years you know since that experience yeah <laughs> okay so then after this you went to uh, an ashram in rishikesh i think to further your yoga knowledge no actually i went to uh, to further my yoga knowledge i have done uh, shivananda course uh i because uh, this was very interesting the transformational format was beautiful because it got me connected to my breath 
it got me connected to my you know uh, body because body awareness is zero you know when you're in a stress stressful job living your life where you have to do this we're living on the outside most of the time after that i did a shivananda training so this was a teachers training also and then shivananda training and then i went to uh, uh, i went to europe to assist as a teacher okay and then i also the rishikesh one was mainly because i keep studying yoga you know it's it's a never i'm actually i don't even like to call myself a teacher because we are all students of yoga there is no end to it and i keep learning even now i i am i am i do take classes i also you know keep reading up and i join classes and i'm very happy to join beginners in different forms of styles of yoga and there are so many you know keeping your mind open and learning so rishikesh was one of those uh, trust with a very senior teacher so i was there yeah so uh, shika you mentioned something that you were always overweight and that was one of the pivotal points which kind of push you in the direction of yoga and you know one always has this image of yoga uh, people who practice yoga being really skinny and uh, you know having this incredible flexibility etc so how was your experience being a larger frame person and suddenly exploring all these rubber band kind of position and uh, i have, you see i have been a part of your yoga classes you are so calm you do everything with such mindfulness you know and how you encourage your students how you make them work with their bodies just where they are at this moment there is nothing that is done which is putting their body into any kind of pressure mm. and so your own journey must have started something like that itself not putting your body into any kind of pressure and allowing it to open out absolutely because in the beginning i couldn't even you know i had a i i remember once i dropped the pen in my car i couldn't pick it up because my belly was in the way so now a person like this trying to do forward fold and touching the knees is impossible you know and you hate your body when you're doing that so and if the person if the teacher is constantly saying and, and yoga teachers are generally mostly very kind you know but you yourself start forcing yourself to go into that perfect pose and also it's actually very demotivating and a lot of times we don't go back for yoga classes if the pose is the hero rather than how we feel you know so for me that uh, that i like to be very mindful of because i have been through if somebody comes to my class and says that i am very anxious and you know and i have planned a very active class i would be mindful of how the person is feeling because that is more important than the class have sequenced so i would like to bring it in because it's very important to feel like this is my sanctuary like you're saying the sacred space right for a lot of people and it is a sacred space you know when you come on the mat it is your sacred space in a way where you are discovering yourself where you are finding yourself it has to be a very gentle journey into yourself you know and body it has to be more than just the body it has to be mind it has to be feeling good after the class not hating your body after the class so that therefore yeah am i i think i sh- i'm grateful for all my challenges because they make me better at right. as a person you know we all are going through challenges and if that makes us em- empathetic towards others right so so many of us sort of struggle with this self discipline required for yoga you know yoga like any practice that you take up requires a certain amount of discipline and also people are intimidated thinking that they are overweight they don't have the stamina they will make excuses i do that you know that i, I don't have the time for this class so you know you struggle to make sure that you get to the mat and you are very encouraging and you will you know follow up and ensure that the person shows up at the mat so was um, leaving the corporate world by now if if you left the corporate world was this a struggle to make um, you know give everything to yoga give up your sense of security and uh, you must have had a steady stream of uh, income coming from your corporate world and suddenly now you are in the deep sea of yoga and spirituality uh, so did you have any fears or regrets actually i made the transition very slowly because like i said i took a sabbatical and yoga got into my life and then i got back to advertising and uh, 
what actually I experienced was that I was integrating yoga into my work life. You know, if I was stressed, I would use Anulong Vilong. I would uh, just take, just detach from the problem. I can't come up with an idea. I'll take a walk and, you know, just focus on my abdominal breathing. An idea would come. I practiced it while I lived through that corporate life with these tools, right? But at the same time, I knew that I don't, uh, I want to get into something that is, me you know because somewhere you know when uh, like I used to do tarot I this has been my natural inclination and uh, I was kind of covering it up in the corporate world you know you have to present yourself a certain way you have to be a certain way so you know just um, I just needed to be whole and I felt whole when I did yoga and I'm also a transpersonal regression therapist my journey with that also started around the corporate life so while studying I was working and weekends I was studying so um, then I, once I certified in all these disciplines, a yoga had already certified. Then I made a transition when things had already started moving, you know, in terms of yoga, in terms of therapies. That's when I made, and uh, my, in fact, uh, one of my, uh, the head of the company, he stopped me and he said, just give it one more year. Don't be in a rush because you might regret it. And I actually gave that a thought. You know, everybody would say, are you sure you want to quit this beautiful life? Like, you have luxury. Like, you're, you're traveling, you're doing everything. So I gave it one year to just be very sure. But I had already made my decision. So that one year of staying there, I realized this is my, this is the place I want to be. So that, that was pretty good. Yeah. Okay. So now, see get back to yoga i just want to stop here a little bit to discuss about the other aspect of your work life which is hypnotherapy yeah. uh, so that that also has almost an equal role in your life because you are a hypnotherapist mm -hmm. and uh, I, you also came out with something called hypno yoga i remember yeah. so, so your your understanding of the subconscious mind and um, you know how you can actually get your mind to work in your favor rather than working against it, against yeah. your many times it's only our mind which is limiting us. Yeah. And so so what kind of insights can you kind of give all the people who are with us today about how to get your mind to speak to you in a way that motivates you rather than limits you? Hmm. So, uh, you know, this is actually what meditation also does. Uh, it's difficult to practice, but it does, you know, it brings up the demons, you know, in our heads, which we think are demons, but they're a part of us as well, those thoughts. So I think, um, uh, I mean, I see a lot of interconnection of the mind and, you know, on getting on the mat and doing yoga. So, because mind and body are pretty much connected. So one of the, uh, the things that I tell people is that number one, your subconscious mind is the master, right? So it is, they say conscious mind is just 10% and subconscious mind is the real elephant, right? That we need to manage. So where all the emotions are, where all our you know, feelings are. But a lot of us deny ourselves those feelings, you know? I want to have a piece of cake and that makes me happy, but I deny myself and I don't do that. I don't listen to that little voice, like I said in the beginning, you know? Uh, so yeah. one step is to get connected with your breath. You know, the moment you start connecting with your breath, you're connecting with your subconscious, you're connecting with your own self, you know, and that's why we people when they start the breath work, it is very difficult in the beginning, because there's a lot of things that come up a lot of emotions. I remember somebody came into the class and we did just breath work and very gentle, but she was getting almost dizzy, you know, because there were so many things that were coming up. You know, so very important to just connect with our breath, very simple breath, uh, you know, not deny ourselves the feelings, feel completely. That's what feelings are all about. You know, we don't allow ourselves to feel fully. You know, I feel like crying. I don't cry. You know, I have to hold it. I have to be strong. I have to hold it together. I don't, I, I need to laugh. I need to laugh, you know. So feel fully, connect with your breath. Because when you start connecting with your breath, half the battle is won. You know, you will start listening to your body. You will start listening to your mind. The other thing very interesting is write before you sleep. You know, keep a journal. Handwriting is a connection. Your subconscious mind speaks through handwriting when we write. You know, not typing, but handwriting. So a lot of people, you know, when they can't sleep and uh, suffer from insomnia, anxiety, 
and this is a self-help tool half an hour before you sleep write whatever shit is in your head you know just write it down and it just you know it's almost like you're venting it on the paper and the mind is free a lot of people even burn paper so you vent it and let go so that's that's one of the techniques one can do but yoga really 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 helps you manage your mind you know it's yes. and, and it is yoga for everyone you know which is how we now come to the different kinds of yoga that you're teaching yeah. obviously there is this belief that you know for yoga you need to have a certain type of body a certain type of mind a certain amount of uh, uh like you mentioned earlier you know you you can't be riddled with problems in your body and do yoga because i remember when i started out i would also feel you know this is going to increase my pain in my back or this is going to increase and you gently pushed me mm-hmm. and said no this will you will overcome these issues with it as long as you continue to stay with what the practice asks for so now shikhas you you teaching um, hatha yoga you are teaching yin yoga you are teaching restorative yoga you've got five elements yoga this chair yoga and it causes also a lot of confusion do we really need these many different kinds of yogas and what's the difference uh, amongst all of these yogas that you teach you yeah, honestly yoga is the same it's yeah. just depending on the need of people we bring out a different kind of yoga now like i said you know when i was in corporate life i really had no idea about the kind of schools i have discovered of yoga such beautiful teachings and learnings but you know sometimes we need to approach our uh, uh, like i said we one needs to fall in love with yoga before you really start the trek up the mountain you know and it's a beautiful trek you know but the point is that you have to first want to do it you know so uh, the different kinds of uh, yoga have also evolved with you know like we started with abhibindu at abhibindu when we started the yoga studio we started with beginners yoga because people who were already doing yoga wanted to you know just not they they they've already found a teacher and they want so we started with beginners because most most people want to get into yoga but they don't have a place to go where somebody would explain the details of yoga to them like i said my teacher told me the details of what it means to breathe like this a teacher training course tells you but when you go to a regular class it you don't really find those details of course some schools of yoga are doing that but uh, you know uh, for regular people who have one hour in hand to do yoga how do we bring that you know so beginners yoga hatha yoga was born out of that and the intention of that was to have people take back a practice so we created a module where i would explain every detail of the pose i will explain the sequence and once you get used to it you practice with me and it you know it's not too long it's a small module but people started doing their own practice now the the bigger mountain is doing the practice on your own right and to take the practice further because you reached a point and now repeating the whole thing again and again gets boring for people so now we we brought in uh, you know uh, there was for yoga for complete beginners then yoga for beginners to practice what they've learned then we had hatha flow yoga which is more challenging so this is more like you know people who've done yoga before but want to kind of explore like for me hatha flow yoga was an expression of what i have learned is like my whole toolkit is open there <laughs> you know so i uh, i i bring in hatha yoga so hatha yoga is basically you know um, you get into a pose you really hold the pose you feel the pose right and you breathe into the pose when we are doing hatha flow yoga we are moving from pose to pose mindfully with the breath right and that uh, also turns into a kind of a like you know it brings up a lot of fire it can bring up a lot of heat in the system also for some people it becomes a workout but what it does really the intention is to find a, a balance in your mind and breath and body okay through right. those right so that was hatha flow yoga where i also now online have started bringing in acupressure into this also so the sequences are created by me here creatively here i can express my creativity in this class right but to come to this first you have to understand the alignments you have to understand the breath where beginners is very important right so this is where what i really enjoy about your classes is how much attention you gave not only to each person 
but to the mindfulness, the mindfulness with which you kind of get into a pose. It's almost like seeing poetry in action. You will take your time, you will make sure that you are perfectly aligned and then you're in no rush and then you will gently get into that pose, right? right? And, and you encourage everyone to do the same, to really get into the pose very uh, mindfully and then you work a lot on the alignments, you know. You will keep checking to see if a particular thing can, uh, will not be harmful to their knees or to their back. And so a lot of attention to alignments. Okay. However, there's certain, despite that, you obviously felt the need that there needs to be yin yoga and restorative yoga because even though you were paying so much attention to al alignments, etc., there were still people who needed to do different, a different type of asan practice rather than what Hatha Yoga Flow uh, was you know, kind of dealing with. Now there are people, you know, who are, I, I, I got a call from uh, some, uh, uh, you know, a person who, who said my daughter wants to start yoga and uh, do you think beginners would be good? I said, yeah, we've just started the batch. So she came for beginners. And she didn't like it, you know, and um, I said, okay, let her come for yin, you know. Now what happens is youngsters are going through also a lot of stress, right? There's, there's a lot of power struggle at work. There is a lot of studies. There's a lot of stuff. So there's a lot of mind work happening, which is yang, right? The fire is up. So she didn't enjoy that beginner's class, even though it was very slow and mindful. So I called her for the yin class and she, uh, she loved it. And she came for many classes after that because that time, see, the kind of lifestyle she's leading, yin will help her find uh, de stress and relax. So, and then there are some people who don't want to do all this, they've got other stuff going on in their life. Maybe they are gymming and all, but they need to work on their flexibility, they want to work with tissue. So, the difference is that the morning yang classes are working on the muscle tissue. Right? We're working with muscle strength, we're working with uh, sending blood and oxygen to the muscles, we're firing up in the morning classes. In the evening classes, we are winding down. At the same time, we are going into the joints, we're working with the connective tissue, we are also easing into the poses. There's a lot of mind work that is happening there as well. There the holds are longer. Some people enjoy the yin mode more. It also depends on the personality, you know, some people just need, I needed at that corporate lifetime, if you put me in a power yoga class, I used to come out angry. <laughs> but if I went to a slow class, I loved it because it was helping me unwind all the stress, you know. So there is a need for this as well, depending on the kind of person, kind of uh, lifestyle, kind of body, everything matters. Yeah. And, and these practices, yin yoga and restorative, are very, very meditative, very slow. So, uh, um, Shikha, can you demonstrate, you know, like, for example, uh, what would be the difference in the different kinds of yoga? You're teaching chair yoga, you're teaching yin and restorative, you've got hatha yoga. So, let us just kind of uh, take pick up one asana and let's see how each yoga style approaches it. Yeah, we can do that. So I'll give you an example of one pose that I would do in different ways, okay? So if I was to do, a, see beginner's classes is the Shivananda, uh, you know, uh, sequence that I teach, but that's really broken down and everything. But I'm going to Hatha, say, uh, let me start with Yin. Okay, so if I'm doing Yin, there is a pose in which, okay, uh, I'll just open this for Wi-Fi. So, if I go into a squat, okay, now here in a yin, yin class, what would happen? I would want to feel the pose in the target area. So I would feel it in my inner legs right now, okay, and I'm opening it up, okay. So for some people, this would be very intense, but they're feeling the edge and they can hold it here. And we will hold this pose for say five minutes, a squat, okay. Some people can't do this, so I would use a prop in a yin class. Say I'll give them a bolster and I will make them sit on the bolster for five minutes. What happens is there is a stretch that you would feel. There is an edge in the pose, but at the same time, we are relaxing into it. We are quieting down. We're staying here for three to four minutes. And what it is doing is it's opening up the tissue. It is stressing the tissue and then releasing uh, the tissue. 
and this also helps with pain etc if you're a continuous practitioner and also relaxes the mind right now if i was to do this same thing in a hatha flow class okay if uh, say for backache for backache i have given say this in a yin class okay this is one of the poses and <clears throat> everything works as a sequence of course so in a hatha flow class what i would do how i would bring this pose in say for a uh, back sequence is like you do surya namaskar is also a kind of flow different poses are stitched together so i would i would create a sequence which would work for the back say i'll go into uh, a lunge and then i'll go into a lizard okay or i will be in a lunge and from here i'll go into child's pose and from here i would go into a cobra this is working now on the lower back okay and then would go into a down dog and then i'll come into a squat and sometimes i would in a hatha flow class maybe hold here maybe for 30 seconds one minute and then find my way up okay and here okay now somebody doesn't want to move so much doesn't want cardio but wants to relax and wind down yin would and yet want to work on flexibility yin class would work really well in a yin class i would go for four postures where you feel stress in the body generally this is the area that is targeted but then of course different meridians as well now if i was to do a restorative class it will be impossible for a person who comes to, like a lot of people will come for restorative to restore in the body so i would do the same pose in a manner that would be very kind and restorative so i would take this okay i will create a high seat and i will put them against the wall this could also happen in yin depending on the level of you know uh, how the body is i would put them in a class which works for them so maybe a person who cannot do a full squat can definitely do this now i have support from behind i have support under my leg under my hip and at the same time i'm targeting that uh, in a point but in restorative i don't need to feel stress i don't need to feel a stretch okay i just need to relax and this is very relaxing maybe i'll just tell them to just relax here okay and it will really really relax maybe i'll keep something under their head maybe a chair you know where they can rest and we will stay for 5 minutes some people sleep in the poses in the restorative class okay then if i was to do the same thing in a chair now person with knee issues may not be able to even sit on that big seat i created right so i will bring a chair in okay and i will tell them to bring a lot of cushions and pillows and stuff okay and i would ask them to do the same pose here now a person who is 60 70 cannot come on the floor will be able to do this and they are doing it you know and they are doing much more than i expected and they are still getting the benefit right but the lifestyle the body is not restricting them from feeling the pose from feeling the benefit of the pose so <clears throat> that's why i have different styles of yoga if a person with a knee issue came to my hatha flow class i wouldn't know how to manage that so for them it would be rejection now for them it is like oh i can't do yoga but that's not true they can absolutely do yoga it's just that they have to find a gentler way of getting into those poses right so and i have to add here that you have been so kindly offering chair yoga free right through the entire lockdown period there have been old age home uh, people who have benefited from this there's so many people doing that and benefiting from a situation where we were we could not we were restricted in our homes there was no movement especially the elderly people and people who had mobility issues and all are all uh, still benefiting from your chair it's one of my favorite classes and i feel so happy doing it it's just a half an hour class but it makes me so i feel recharged because they're doing stuff like you know people uh, people who have knee issues and all it's making me delighted you know they are taking the legs up and doing lunges you know and it's beautiful they are opening up and they after the class they would write such beautiful messages it feels really nice you know so i'm just saying there is it's not something some people say that oh it's very commercial you commercializing yoga i heard 
go somewhere but i i think it's adapting yoga because each of these uh, streams that i'm offering are actually a shade of me you know it's a shade of how i have discovered yoga in different parts different phases of my life now i am very much into yang and i like uh, you know after but there was a time i just hated it if if you brought me into an active class i just wanted to rest you know so you have to approach the person you have to bring yoga to a person that's what i did in advertising right you have to present something to the person based on their life and life right. so that's right. the reason why so many right. so let's check with the bharti who's been at the back end of this and uh, holding this all together if there are any questions that anybody wishes to ask or if uh, if there are any comments you'd like to share good evening mamta ma'am just dropped like i dropped the text in facebook and i'm just checking uh, there is one more there is a one question maybe if the viewer is present then uh, they could ask the question themselves or you could read it out yeah they have dropped uh, in there's a question by ekta that she has have she have a back ache pain from last 7 years after her delivery so can uh, yin yoga can help her in that pain absolutely so this yeah, that was in 7 uh, years so she has a pain after her delivery 6 7 years she's had this pain is what you're saying right yeah so uh, see depending on the degree of pain like what i showed in a hatha yoga hatha flow you know thing if it's just stiffness you know it can be opened up with movement uh, depending on the level of pain it can definitely be healed maybe uh, yin would work if depending on her lifestyle and the uh, you know how she feels or restorative can work even hatha flow can work so back pain can be worked around very very beautifully with yoga Right. Any other question, Bhanti? Yeah, you go. The viewers in the room. Uh, Bhanti, no other question. no i'm just opening the window that viewers can ask the question directly i'm just opening i'm just asking them to open the videos and audios okay aur start video kya tha ye mute ho gaya hai start video mein aap unki taraf nazar aane lag jaoge ye ab ye mute ho gaya hai shikha and mamta ma'am is there so any queries questions you can ask right now i have to mute everyone just feel free to ask the question Yes, if there's somebody who'd like to ask the question directly to Shikha, she'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Bharti, it looks like there are no questions, or we are unable to hear the participants. So, no questions right now. Okay. All right. So, just in case anybody has a question, they are welcome to send a message to uh, Abhibindu. My phone number is uh, on the posters everywhere that we share. And um, uh, if there are any specific questions, we can put them to Shikha. And if it's possible for her to respond to any specific query, she'll be happy to do so. And for people who are here, if you need to know something, if there's something that uh, I can offer you, please feel free to ask. Yeah. Otherwise, I can definitely respond later. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, Shikha, for joining us today in my space. This was our first episode, and I had absolutely no doubt in my mind who I wanted to invite for this session. Thank you so much for taking out time, Shikha. Thank you so much. Honor. <laughs> thank you very much, and thank you, Bharti, for holding it all together. Thank you so much, ma'am. Always. All right. Bye, so everybody. Thank you.